So one of the important roles of being an engineering manager is making sure that your team is happy, productive, and efficient. But every team and situation is different, and it's important to find the right solution. So how do you iterate towards building an effective team? So Emily kind of queued things up for me. I'm going to be using today to talk about how you can use retrospectives as a tool to build an effective team. Retrospectives are a meeting that can be run by anyone on the team. It doesn't have to be the leader. But the leadership really has to be involved and has to be bought in. They have to be frequent. Can be at least a once a month or can be as often as weekly. So you can adjust to your team's needs. And they're not just focused on the development process, but on the team and the team as well. So how many people have participated in a retrospective before? Um, that looks like maybe half the room. Okay, keep your hands up if you found them useful and important. Oh, actually, most of the people who have participated in them, that's pretty good. Well, um, I have a confession. It actually used to be my least favorite meeting. And it really took me learning what the right techniques are to run a good retrospective to become my favorite. So I'm going to share some of those tips for you. So the first time I participated in a retrospective, my manager came into the room and gathered us all there. And then he projected on the screen a document. In the document, he put the categories start, stop, continue. So then we all in the room had to rack our brains on what we were trying to come up with for each of these categories for process changes or process preferences that we wanted to keep. Oftentimes, there would be even things that were repeated in the start and stop category. For example, start entering story point estimates in a ticket before working on it, and stop working on tickets without communicating estimates. So why was this not productive? And what are some key points of running a really good retro, one that will actually be effective in making your team happy, productive, and efficient? My first tip is to solicit for information, not solutions. The problem with start, stop, continue is you're asking your team to come up with a solution. That makes it really difficult for them to surface something that they don't really know what to do about. So it's hard for them to bring it up. It's even harder for them to bring up something that they're not even sure if it's worth surfacing. They're not sure if there should be anything that should be done about it. So I'm going to talk about my favorite type of retrospective. Glad, sad, mad. So what I do is I write these on the board. That's actually one of the, I always like to be a little creative in the way I write it. And then I passed out a stack of post-it notes and some Sharpies for each person. And so we spend some quiet time and write up whatever you think can fit in those categories since the last retro. So glad are like good things that happened since last retro. This might be the launch of a project or a fellow team member fixing an issue. But it can be as simple as the fact that it's Friday or that the cafeteria served these really amazing chicken waffles that day. The key point is you're gathering information and feedback. Sad um, are things that you weren't pleased that happened but aren't necessarily things that you can really take an action item on. For example, maybe you were sick three days out of last week. You couldn't help being sick but it hindered your ability to meet the project's timeline. Mad doesn't necessarily have to be something you're actually mad about, but it's something that if it happened again, then you would hope that something would be done differently based on what you learned, or some actions would be taken to prevent it happening in the future. An example of this might be the bill last week was broken constantly because of um, these infrastructure changes, and that prevented any deploys from going out. Pretty common problem. So once all these posts are on the board, you can group similar ones to discuss it. I'm pretty sure more than one person noticed the broken builds. So once you group them, then you can discuss and gather more information about it. Find out details about that change, how it was rolled out, and you know, what type of change it was it so that you can prevent it. As a group, you can make decisions on how to improve things in the future. And that brings us to the next point about running a good retro. They need to be blameless. It's not about who broke the build. It's about the fact that the build was broken. In fact, this is actually the main point that's listed in the retrospective prime, prime directive. So what is the retrospective prime directive? 
Regardless of what we discover, we understand and truly believe that everyone did the best job they could, given what they knew at the time, their skills and abilities, the resources available, and the situation at hand. Isn't that beautiful? Whenever anyone's new to my retrospective meeting, I always write this out on the board and read it aloud. It's important that we're not throwing blame around. Instead of, Tyrone brought the servers down, it's much more productive to talk about what code triggered the outage and how do we ensure how to test for this use case before deploying. It's not about Shilpa's three weeks on delivering her project. It's much more useful to talk about, are we correctly scoping out deadlines? Are we providing appropriate milestones along the way? Are we communicating changes in timelines when we surface issues that affect our estimates? Regardless of what we discover, we understand and truly believe that everyone did the best job they could, given what they knew at the time, their skills and abilities, the resources available, and the situation at hand. This quote's actually so good that multiple times when the next group of people were coming into the meeting, they requested I didn't erase it on the board so they can leave it up for their meeting. Next point, invite cross-functional partners. The retro is about how the team works together. That includes everyone on the team. Engineers, product designers, data scientists, product manager, your launch team. Whoever works closely with your team and your cross-functional partners will also appreciate getting feedback on how they can better support your team. You can actually continue iterating on the retrospective process through the retro itself. So, um, as Emily said, you know, one thing is maybe like not trying to tell people what to do, but the one thing I did when I first joined Instagram was the only thing, I was like, this is the one thing I'm gonna tell you how to do. In general, I'm not gonna tell you how to do things, but I really wanna do these retrospective things. I think they're super useful. Um, none of the engineers on my team had ever done one before. But I promised them, if you hate this, you can use the system to get rid of it. If you think it's not useful, then just put in the sad mad column, you think that this meeting is a waste of time, and I promise I will use this retro to get rid of the retro. <laughs> so they gave it a try. And actually for several retros in a row, it showed up in the glad problem, uh, column that people were happy that we had these retrospectives. This last retro though, it finally showed up in the sad column and that was because our intern was very sad that this was gonna be his last retro. <laughs> I know, very touching. Um, so some of the more granular things that we have fixed from the retro in the retro are the cadence, which could change over time. Um, looking for a room next time that had more space on the whiteboard. And somebody made a comment that it was hard to remember what happened since the last retro to write the stickies. So now we do a group brainstorm before writing the stickies of what has happened. Now to the most important point, follow up. It is the most important thing to take action items from the retro. So for me, I usually partner with my product manager who takes notes during the meeting and marks action items and owners. The team will not believe in the retrospective unless you actually take actions on the things that they come up with. So one option is that at the beginning of the next retro, you can actually go over all your action items and then update on the progress. This will help your team feel heard. Conversely, you can actually explicitly choose not to do this. And then this becomes a feedback mechanism on how much your team actually appreciates the changes that they made. So you know, last time they complained about something happening and you took an action, did they actually notice and put in the glad column this time? So let's say you actually start using these retrospectives and you surface an issue where bad code was released in production and it sat out there for a while before anyone noticed. Together, you discussed with your team and you decided that this time it would have been hard to test or predict that the code would have reacted that way in the wild but adding some alerting and monitoring would have dis helped discover the issue quicker at least. So the next retro you run, you actually get alerting and monitoring both in the glad and the mad column. What's going on? Don't worry, this is actually pretty normal and you can find out details in discussion time. In this case, it was actually in the glad column because it helped catch another issue very quickly. But it was in the mad column because once it was detected, it spammed the on-call with a few hundred messages within minutes. 
So this is a way that you can continually iterate, iterate um, for your team. And there are always shifting, prior, uh, shifting things going on with your team and your project. But one thing to remember is that you're never going to permanently solve any issues. The, continue, the conditions of a team and project are always changing. So I'll give the example of um, a time I was managing a team that was building a brand new product. We were iterating so quickly and with shifting priorities that they really wanted to have a lot more focus and a place for permanent whiteboard space. So we ended up moving into a war room. And for several retrospectives afterwards, it kept showing up in the GLAD column. But as the project went on, it started showing up in the MAD column. And it turned out that as we got closer to launch, they were working on more and more details and no longer thinking about big picture. And so they were no longer getting the benefits of being in a war room and felt disconnected from the company. So having the retrospective helped us detect this change in project very quickly so that we can um, iterate and move the team out of the war room and they can feel connected with the company again. So even when you feel like you have an effective team and everyone's happy, it's good to keep running the retrospectives to detect changes as they occur. Glad, sad, mad, and it's not the only type of retrospective you can run. There are some other types. Another one is appreciations, where you give praise to each other with new information, surfacing different information that you have. Puzzles, the type of things that you're not really sure what to do with information, but we might want to take some action on it. Complaints with recommendations, which are actually the action items you would like to see. Hopes and wishes, kind of like future dreams for the team. Another version is help hindered hypothesis, where we talk about things that help the team, hinder the team, and some things that you want to try. For other types of retrospectives, um, I recommend the book Agile Retrospectives. It's one of the books that we're giving in the giveaway today. And also funretrospectives.com. There are many more options than these listed. So I know the program said we were build I was talking about building effective teams. And here I spent pretty much the entire time talking about retrospectives. So why the bait and switch? Well, the most important thing I've learned in managing so many different individuals, different teams, for different products, different organizations, and at different companies, is that it's really important not to have a set way to do things. You need to iterate your style of management constantly so that you can manage someone through different levels of their career, or to manage a project through different stages of product development, to manage a team through various phases of hiring and churn, or a company through different series of funding. There is no magic list of things to do to build an effective team. You have to figure that out for each different team and situation. So that's why the key to building an effective team is learning how to get the feedback you need to constantly adjust for your team's needs as they change. Thank you.